Hey, hey, welcome back. This is the Ben Shapiro Show. Joining us on the line is Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano. He's Vice President for National Security and Foreign Policy at the Heritage Foundation, served 25 years in the United States Army, retiring as a Lieutenant Colonel, and served as a key leader on the Trump presidential transition team. Lieutenant Colonel, thanks so much for joining the show. Really appreciate it, and thanks so much for your service. Hey, great to be with you. Well, why don't we start with, uh, with your general thoughts on Veterans Day. Where do you think the country stands on this particular Veterans Day? We are at war still in places like Afghanistan. We still have troops on the ground in Syria. What do, what do Americans need to know about American service men and women overseas that they don't? Yeah, I, you know, when I joined the Army, we were still, in a sense, dealing with the aftermath of the Vietnam War. And, and to be honest, this country wasn't very kind to its veterans. Uh, a lot of communities didn't even have Veterans Day parades. And I think the one thing that's pretty remarkable is, I mean, we've never been more partisan and more divided than we are now. But it's amazing how the support for veterans and the concern about veterans and, and the respect and, and uh, given to veterans is, is I think, pretty remarkable. And, and so I think if there's anything this country should be proud of right now, it is um, how we treat our veterans. Now, it's not to say we don't have some real serious issues that are homelessness, um, that are in suicides, but by and large, this country really embraces and honors their veterans. And, and I, that gives me a lot of optimism and hope for the future. Well, let me ask you about the, the situation with, with America's military today. So President Obama obviously slashed the military dramatically. We're still fighting back from that. It, what, what's America's military readiness like this Veterans Day? Well, that's a really interesting question. One of the things that we, we do at the Heritage Foundation is every year we put out a report that grades the military in a nonpartisan, uh, objective way. We grade them the same way every year, and we measure whether the military essentially is getting better or worse. And we've been doing this for six years now. So our data spans both the Obama and the Trump administration. And and there has been, I think, a pretty remarkable shift. Um, under President Trump's leadership, we have invested a lot more in readiness that clearly reflects uh, in the, the, the uh, capabilities of the military. The other thing that's really interesting is what this report looks at is not just the military capabilities, but also what our friends and allies bring to the table places where we would have to operate with others and remarkably our alliances are stronger and more supportive of the u.s military now than they are when trump took office i think it's a pretty remarkable uh, outcome that i don't know a lot of people really appreciate well, let's talk for a second about the, the men and women who are currently serving in the United States military. So the, the media tend to have this this very odd view of the United States military, that, that almost as though the draft is still occurring, as though the only people who are joining up in the United States military uh, are people who couldn't avoid it by, by going to college, uh, as though the military is populated entirely by people who are impoverished and looking for a scholarship. But how does the U.S. military actually break down in terms of its constituency? Well, that's, a, that's a really different than it was when I came in the military in the 1970s. We actually still had a draft. We have an all-volunteer military. And it's not just that people volunteer for the military. is You actually have to compete to get in the military. Yeah, actually, 70% of the youth age population that, that is, would be eligible for military service isn't qualified to serve. And that's because they got a drug condition, they don't have a high school graduation, they've got some other disqualifying characteristic, they're overweight, they're out of shape. So only 30% of the, of, the, of the youth are actually eligible to serve, and those people are the same kind of employees that everybody else wants. So the fact that we've been able to recruit and retain this really high quality force is really remarkable. You know, less than half of 1% of the American population serves in the military today. So there's very few defending and protecting an awful lot of us. Well, looking forward to the, the future of America's foreign policy and, and, our, and the, the future of the American military, uh, what do you make of the gaps in American public life about this right now? President Trump obviously is very pro-military. Uh, he just has an instinct to be pro-military. Uh, he's recommended massive military increases. Every single Democrat has mentioned massive military reductions. Uh, they've talked about undermining key alliances with, with some of our allies while simultaneously outsourcing foreign policy to international institutions. Where do things stand right now in terms of American foreign policy and the military going into 2020? Well, I think this is the most troubling issue, and, and it really is put America at a crossroads. 
Defense used to be one of the few things that uh, was relatively bipartisan. So, for example, every year we do something called the National Defense Authorization Act that authorizes you know all kinds of military activities and programs. Um, we pass one of those every year for over 50 years. This year it's it's in danger of not passing because it's simply because of a partisan divide. I and mean, we don't have a budget for the defense uh, department. It's a continuing resolution. So what we have seen, and this really started under President Obama, it's not, look, it's not a Republican, Democrat thing. It's just reality of what's going on. The, the Democrats have decided to treat defense just like any other political issue. Uh, and the, so the bipartisanship of, well, the first thing we have to do is make sure that the men and women that we put in harm's way, that they have the equipment and the backing and support that they need to go out there and fight, protect this country. That's no longer a primary consideration. It's now people play politics with defense just like they play with housing or health care policy or anything else. That's troubling to me. I don't think that can endure. If that's a message, I, I mean, I think the American people have to decide whether they want politics like that to continue. And I think that's something that will be on the ballot in 2020. Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano, Vice President for National Security and Foreign Policy at the Heritage Foundation. Thank you again for your service on this Veterans Day and really appreciate your time. Thanks. And everything, all our defense stuff and the reports on our website, heritage.org. People can download the entire report. Go check it out right now. Really appreciate it again. Thanks, Lieutenant. So, Lieutenant Colonel.